Hey, I'm Super Dell, and I am here with Super Troy, one of the youngest pilots in the world, and certainly the most skilled young pilot. And we are going over the 304 reasons the flat top is the only unit to buy or fly because of safety, ease of use, durability, and reliability. So we're on page 12. 12. 12. Page 12. Okay, page 12. We'll get it going. Quick release harness buckles that can be operated with cold hands, arctic mittens, underwater, and with your eyes closed. Car driving by, truck. Okay, from vast experience with other units, uh, we fly all winter because winter's an awesome time to fly. But when you land and your hands are cold and you're trying to do some little buckle and press some little button, it's literally impossible. I've had numerous times where I landed and could not get out of the harness. I had to sit there and stick my hand under my arm and warm it up for like five minutes before I could unbuckle myself out of the unit. Imagine if you would have gone into a frozen lake or something like that and you're so cold, you can't even do the buckles. With the flat top, you have the quick release harness, which we've already shown. Here we go. Now, not only is it quicker to get set up, makes it simple, but hold on, hold on, hold on, we're getting to it. Notice we have a big, huge loop right here on the Velcro. So even if you have a mitten, let's say you have a fist, you could hook it with a thumb, anything, and put that hand in there and still undo the harness with no fingers, no fingers. This is a huge safety issue. If you went into a cold, cold water, you know, you think right now, oh yeah, I can undo my harness in three seconds. Yeah, we'll try that when your hands are frozen. Hands are frozen. Let's say you've got all your fingers are like frozen tight. Boom, you're out of the harness. So flat top, we're thinking, using the brains, using the intelligence to fix the issues on the sport. Two guys went into ice cold water and died in just like a month's period of time, putting it like five people who drowned in a single year, just because pretty much every paramotor on the market sinks immediately in water and has so many buckles and the type of buckles that are so hard to get out, they just couldn't get out to save their life. The flat top can float, which you can see in many instances on YouTube. Like if you search uh, paramotor splash, you can watch me setting a world record doing the first foot drag and wingtip drag. And I uh, got away with it the first time, but the second time I caught my cage and face planted at like 50 miles an hour. Well, I went face planted straight into the water. I was above water in five seconds. I was out of the harness in a fraction of one second, less than one second to get out of the harness. The other four and a half seconds were just climbing out between the risers and swimming to the uh, or out from under the unit, because it was still staying on top, I was just face down. So I just swam out of the unit. So five seconds. There's other videos on YouTube where you can watch people underwater for over a minute. And there's this one guy, he's underwater for like a full minute. You can watch the video and it literally clicks out second after second and the guy's underwater until the people on the beach grabbed him and pulled him to the surface. He would have been dead because he couldn't get out of the harness. Not only can you undo the harness with a quick release, but you can do it with your eyes closed, upside down, with your legs tied together, with your pants at your ankles, and wearing sunglasses and heavy gloves. You can still get out of your harness. Very, very important feature, and the flat top is the only one that has it. Okay. Buckles for maximum exit speed in case of water landing. Yes, the way it's designed, it's for maximum speed. Bam, you can grab it and get out. And this, we put a, a little solid tube in there so it has some texture so that you can feel around for it. Grab buckle, slide over, boom, you can grab it with your eyes closed upside down. You know exactly where it is and it's a, a perfect spot to be able to have the leverage to get out. Because other buckles, if it's like clear down here, you just might not have the strength or back here, you don't have the strength to undo a buckle that's clear up behind you. So it's important it's in the right spot to be able to get out. Okay, hit that one. Adjustable leg and shoulder straps for optimal positioning of weight as well as widest range of pilot weight and sizes. Now, Super Troy flew at age 12, 
with a full-size flat top. Uh, and your brother, Super Jordan, flew at age 10. But you can also see people on YouTube that weigh well over 300 pounds flying the exact same harness that a 12 or a 10 year old can fly. So the flat top, the way it's set up, the harness is extremely adjustable. We make the shoulder straps a lot longer than they need to be so you could have a guy over seven feet high and still fit in the harness. So extremely adjustable harness and very easily adjustable. So you can quickly change it from one thing to another without having to do all kinds of goofy stuff. So uh, easy to operate carabiners for fastest riser connect and disconnect, even with gloves. <laughs> hey, I want some corn. Freeze dry, you gotta get some of these. Snackies from Thrive Life Corn. Corn, it's awesome. It's just corn, but it's like the best tasting corn ever. Freeze dried, super awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's good, it's good, try it. You'll see why I'm talking about it. Okay, back to the uh, carabiners, here we go. Bingo, open carabiners, even with gloves on. Very easy to open the carabiners, but when you let go of it, it snaps back into position, so it locks itself automatically. People have had serious issues with carabiners. They got in a hurry, and people have launched with carabiners open because they didn't have a nice carabiner design like that. So even the carabiner design can have a huge impact. It could literally kill you if you don't have the right one. This one, I'm a big weight weenie, so I wanted the lightest, but strongest, and easiest to do. There's other carabiners with a little push button, and those with heavy gloves or cold hands, it's impossible, you can't push that button. You can't push a little button this big when your hands are freezing cold. Doesn't work that way. But you can do this, boom, open, closed. So, carabiner, easy, operate. We're thinking, we don't just slap on a carabiner, we try and find and hunt over the whole world to find the absolute best, lightest, strongest carabiner that's the easiest to operate. Okay, uh, steel connection points for maximum strength and safety and reliability. So like your quick release harness, this is just a standard buckle. We didn't try and reinvent the wheel. We use standard, extremely well proven and tested parts on the flat top. A lot of people out there, you know, it's one of those things you'd never think about. Are they just using cheap Chinese buckles that have never actually been load tested? They buy them from China for 14 cents and then your life depends on it and you don't know what that is. These are all the top quality connection points. Every single place you have well proven and tested hardware to give you the highest possible level of safety and with the least amount of weight. So you have the strength where you need it, but the lightweight where you can get away with it. I want some, lose them. <laughs> okay, here you go. A ah. It's like purified corn, it's awesome. Freeze dried corn. Ingredient, it's like corn. Corn is the only ingredient. Awesome, okay. Spectra cloth, sewn runners. These sewn runners will literally pick up a truck. They're crazy strong. And you have two of them, so they only support, you know, <laughs> You got two, so you, it's half the loading basically. So you got double the strength by having a load of two. But either one will carry like more than 20 times your body weight, no problem. And we don't put metal to metal. This drives me nuts. You'll see people put an aluminum carabiner through a steel hole. An aluminum carabiner up against a steel hole. These people are just not thinking clearly, do not understand. <laughs> There's things you just don't do. You don't even put aluminum metal to metal. So you have a sewn runner that goes through the comfort bar. You're hanging from a Spectra cloth strap. Nowhere is it metal to metal rubbing on the unit, which is another thing from other generations. They had a buckle attaching it to the comfort bars. And over time, that buckle while you're running would rub a hole into your comfort bar. Just kind of insane. So we went through all the effort to sew the harness to the comfort bar. So first we eliminated a quarter pound and the complexity of having yet another connection point and yet even more sewing and wrapping and adjustments. Keep it simple, stupid, you know how it works. So very, very simple, it's put in, it's, it's set into place and then it's sewn together so you simply do not even have a buckle there. Makes it as strong as possible 
as long lasting because you don't have metal to metal rubbing and anything like that. Okay, leg straps angled to the sides for more comfort during launch. So the way the leg straps are, <clears throat> the, you can see these are hanging out in front of you. Notice how the seat is just resting there. Well, when you take off, your butt is on the edge of that seat. So you never load the leg straps. These leg straps should never have your body weight hanging from your crotch. Do you ever hang from your crotch? <laughs> no, you do not. When I'm kiting. It's getting corn all over you. Sorry, it's good. Okay. When I'm kiting, I hang from my crotch when I go take off. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you wish you had a flat top harness for kiting? That would be nice. See, I'll have to design a kiting there harness. Okay. So very, very important. The design of the unit allows you to get picked up by the seat board, not by the leg straps. Very important. There's even a guy out there who totally just makes up a retarded lie. He hangs a guy and then the guy tries to work himself completely out of the seat and they let the leg straps all the way out as far as they possibly can just to pretend like the guy's hanging from the leg straps. Pretty stupid stuff. They make a whole video just to push one lie when you can see the video I went out, I took off, and then I unhooked the harness in flight. So I had the harness unhooked in flight because you don't fall out. It's like a bucket seat. Then I came in and made a perfect landing without the leg straps attached. And you can see that video proving you do not hang from the leg straps. Very, very important. Okay, shoulder straps connect directly to leg straps for smooth flow of energy and weight transfer from sitting to standing and from running to flying. So this is kind of cool. The shoulder straps, there you go. Let me give you the papers. <laughs> You're going nuts on that stuff. Okay, so the leg straps, connect directly down from the shoulder straps. So it kind of puts you in a circle. So as the shoulder straps come, basically as the leg straps go up behind you, that gives you more shoulder strap. And then as you sit down, that goes the other way. So you get less shoulder strap and your leg straps uh, swing out in front of you. This design is really cool because you take off with no hands. You never ever have to let go of the controls to try and pull yourself up into the seat. It's all a complete circle. So once you stand up, you jump it up onto your back so you've got the shoulder straps all the way down as low as possible. You run for launch and when you pick up your feet, it slides back the other way, jackknifing you perfectly into the seat. And once you're seated, you have zero loading on your body whatsoever. So, super comfortable. That took quite a while to develop. Very, very cool. Uh, minimal harness material for minimal restrictions of pilot's movement. <laughs> and a cumber bar bag so you can hold your freeze-dried pineapple <laughs> or, or corn. snackies or corn. corn. corn the, uh, we sell these made specifically to attach to the comfort bar. And having that rigid system is very cool because it gives you something to attach stuff to. Okay, minimal harness. Again, I think we already hit this one sort of, but a lot of units have crap and huge bulky uh, seat boards and, and padding, which is not necessary at all. This is super comfortable. So you got the com most comfort, but you also have the least amount of foam. If you have a chunk of foam this big under your butt, your butt wants to sink into the middle. But by having a sleek, thin foam, your butt can easily slide back and forth in the harness. So when you go to weight shift, well, imagine sitting on a couch. How are you gonna weight shift or move your butt to the left on a couch? Sit on a couch and try it. You got a big, soft cushion and you're sitting into that cushion. So if you try and move your butt to the left, you have to pull your butt clean up off of the couch. You almost have to lift your entire body weight just to move over five inches when you're on a couch. But when you have a nice slick uh, vibration absorption foam on the harness, you can easily slide and slick back and forth very simply with a pretty slick surface that allows you to kind of slide around and do your weight shift. 
Lights. Again, huge things you would just never even think of in a million years. They got all these little floppy bars and this and anti-torque BS where they have stators in front of the prop, but the fact is it's made by guys that don't understand the sport. These people literally have never had a day of proper training in their lives, and they just don't understand the most basic dynamics of how the sport works. Things like moving your body weight to the side. If you're locked into place by a big squishy foam, it makes it a lot more difficult. Not to mention, the flat top is the only one that has the ability to do that weight shift kit with the much wider bars. Pretty much every other paramotor on the market, those bars are right next to your ribs. And if you're a bigger guy, it's uncomfortable because it's pushing into your sides. You can hardly squeeze into the frame and comfort bars on most units, but it's worse than that because think about it, like on a Blackhawk, it's a single tube. So now all of your body weight is getting squished into one single tube that's right next to your ribs. So if you fall down and you hit the side, it smashes that tube into your rib. Flat top's totally different. It supports your body all the way from the armpit clear to the hip, just like an Icaro seat in a Porsche 911 twin turbo. The seat wraps around and cups your body. Well, this does the same thing, but it just widens it out. So when you pull your body to the right, you're still cupped, but you have the ability to move back and forth. It's a revolutionary design that has changed everything, and it's the reason why even a 10-year-old or 12-year-old can take off with one of the most powerful paramotors in history with zero torque. Look at them take off, and you see the paramotor come straight off. You don't see it torquing and going all over the place like other units. You know, people talk about, oh yeah, we got torque compensation. Just watch a video of them taking off. Unit yanks to the side. Look at the paramotor. Is it level when they took off or is it hanging completely to the side? If it's hanging to the side, their anti-torque obviously isn't working. Logic, reason. If you're gonna get into aviation, you wanna be a little smarter than the average bear. <laughs> like Super Troy. Okay, minimal harness material for minimal restrictions of pilot's movements. Okay, another one is people will put like big pockets and put stuff under their seat. Well, what happens to the seat when you go to run? That seat has to go up behind you. Then you got all kinds of crap getting in the way and binding up your seat and kind of pushing the bottom of the unit out away from your body so the prop is leaning forward. There's so many little pieces you really have to look. Having a slim, thin harness that does not obstruct your movement and mobility is very, very critical so you can make a very clean run, launch, and then transition back to landing. Okay, thin lower back padding for ease of transition from sitting to standing as the seat board can slide up behind your back more easily than it can with thick padding. It also prevents binding after launch, allowing for handless seating. So that's another one, bingo. So the flat top, you have that tightest connection between your body and the paramotor because you don't have a huge bulky area and you don't have the motor stick, you know, eight inches clear out behind the back of the frame. It's all really tight up against your back, makes it easier to run, makes it easy enough even a 10 year old or a 12 year old could do it. Okay, thin seat board also allows seat board to slide up behind pilot for a tighter center of gravity with the motor and more freedom of movement when running. So basically same thing we said again, because the seat board is not this thick, again, you have less between you and the motor for better management of that weight. And that's why the flat top is so much easier to launch and allows you to do things you don't see done on other paramotors. So there's so many little pieces. There's a reason why the best pilots fly flat tops. Big importance. Harness made in the USA by Certified Rigor for Maximum Safety. The harness is not made in China by Joe Blow Sweatshop or whatever, where they don't even have people that know what a paramotor is building their harnesses. Most of them do that because they're trying to get the cheapest thing so they can maximize their profits. Huge difference. Flat top, we're trying to sell the absolute best and safest unit at the lowest possible price. 
two completely opposite methods of thinking. So the harness is made right in the USA by one of the oldest ultralight manufacturers in the world. And he knows exactly how everything needs to be sewn and connected and put together and cross stitched and all the little details that would take you a lifetime of experience in that industry understanding. So you don't have Joe Blow idiot who doesn't know how to fly trying to build a paramotor harness. You have the best harness guy in the industry, it, basically in the world, that's designing these things. So each part is, you know, you're using the best guy for that specific task. The frame is welded by a professional welder. It's not welded by $8 an hour employees in the backyard like other units are who pretend to be, you know, made in the USA. Well, who's making their units? Uh, you can see the welding. You look at that welding, you look at all the connection pieces, how every machine piece is machined perfectly to the radius of the other piece and the angle and held perfectly in place with you know, super high-end uh, and precise jigs that hold everything perfect. So again, a boatload more reasons. Page number 12 of the 304 reasons the flat top is the only unit to fly and buy. Let's go flying. Let's go flying.